Hi, Sarky3. In this video I'd like to show you all these really cool stone mosaics I've been discovering all over the Robledo Mountains in southern New Mexico. They're all over these hills like this. You can see them here in the foreground, all this broken up rock that's all been broken by man, that's conchoidally fractured, it's all real sharp and fresh. It's probably been brought up from below the ground when people were building tombs. So up on these hills you can see this pavement of stone. And it's all been fading for hundreds of years. So you have to adjust the colors of your photos to see the mosaics and the pictures that they were making. So some of it's just this broken flat rock. Other places it's little rounded pebbles. And here you can see it's art made out of cobbles. When you look close, you can see all the little pieces that are set in there to make all these different little characters. Every rock is a face, and every rock has been etched at and carved at. It's been getting disturbed for hundreds of years, but it still remains intact. So as I flip through some of these mosaics and show you the imagery here, I just want to say again what a quandary it is that geologists and archaeologists won't look at these things because they don't believe they can exist. They make assumptions about everything being natural or all disturbance being historic and they never really study it to see if it's uh, man-made and prehistoric. This is going to be true anywhere in the earth where you have these pavements of stone. These same tribes were everywhere on all the continents. All you have to do is go out and take pictures of the rocks on the ground and adjust them. It's amazing what they did with all these little pebbles and each one is a little head. So here's an area where it's more rounded pebbles. They're really complex because they're made up of so many little elements. And as you look at these, notice kind of the patterns. You'll see how they'll be a, sort of everything will be in a line this way, or you'll see actually grid patterns in the rocks. Each little stone appears to be a little head, and there's lots of people of different races here. Very dark skin to brown skin to light skin, pink skin, orange skin. All the different ethnicities of the world were here fighting with the Aztecs. There were people from all over the world here. It's known that the Aztecs were only one of seven tribes that were fighting for an empire in the Valley of Mexico. Archaeologists have misinterpreted our prehistory because they have assumed that America was isolated for thousands of years. But this is a false assumption, an assumption that makes no sense at all. So when you look at it like this, it's a really cool scene. Each stone is the head of a little person. You can see all the different races in this picture. And this shows that there were just thousands of people here. Up on top of this one ridge, there's some really complex mosaics incorporating some larger rocks. And all these little rocks and pebbles just create these incredible scenes that you can view in so many different ways. So if you zoom in real close, you'll see all these tiny little rocks are all carved and form heads. Some of those white stones might actually be some sort of concrete that have been shaped into tiny little heads. And this one here, you can see it's a full figure of a person carved into this stone that's probably just a couple inches. So these are really some complex mosaics up on top of this ridge. When you look close again you can see how every pebble's been placed to form little figures themselves. In this picture you can see up here this slightly larger rock has flake scars in it. If you look close in some of these pictures there's actual flakes that you can tell are artifactual and 
incorporated into these mosaics. You look close, all these little rocks have been etched or painted or carved. So now I want to look at some of this cobble art. These larger rocks allow you to use shading and shadowing more than the smaller ones. Again, when you look close, a lot of these rocks are artifactual. Bashed pieces of quartz, flakes, cores. Sometimes if you zoom out, you can see some bigger figures. It's pretty amazing how they could incorporate all these different 3D elements to create all this different types of art that changes with the seasons and with the sun every day. Another area to the south, you can see that this whole hill has been terraced down and is covered with all these flat rocks that create mosaics. Browner rock in this area. And then this, Shirley found this and I never even saw it so she took this picture but I believe this is a piece of concrete. And then you can see the elements around look like leaves, feathers, hair. When you look close you can see like thumbprints and this looks to have been molded by somebody. When you look real close at the rocks incorporated into these mosaics, each one is etched. There's even little scenes on them. Here are some real obvious alignments. This might be some sort of outline of a structure. If there was a big kind of hut or tent over an area, maybe some of these mosaics are actually the floors of different structures because these people would have had mobile, portable buildings they could take with them because they were nomadic agriculturalists. Another example when you zoom in how all these rocks are etched and have different images on them. So here's one more area. This whole side of this hill is covered in some pretty good sized cobbles all the way to the top of the hill. It's all disturbed. These are large mosaics on the side of the hill. If you were up above looking down, you could probably see different figures. See the top of the hill, that's all masonry work. It's like a pyramid. Up on top of the hill, rotate it and you have a face. They were always doing this. And those big rocks on top of the hill, when you look at them like this, it's pretty amazing and they were incorporating it into the landscape behind. It's all been modified by ancient human beings to create art. They were obsessed with it. Right here you can see this whole pile of rocks. It's all sharply broken. There's conchoidal fractures in it. There's even little segments of drill holes in some of the larger rocks. And what does it look like when you adjust the color? Looks like that. And you can see the artifacts incorporated into this cobble mosaic. Little flakes off of this stone create other elements around. These aren't napping stations where somebody was making a tool. This is where people were making art. So in that regards, we're misinterpreting what a lot of these stone flakes actually are. See also on that slope, looks like they split a really large rock and it had iron staining inside and then I think they rubbed and etched at that to get the different colors. Look at it like this and you see a person kneeling holding maybe somebody's head. Or it might be a conjoined twin holding somebody else's head. 
This shows when you split a rock, the iron inside. I didn't do this, this was left here like that. So I'll show you one last area on the side of this hill. You can see this rock that looks like a head. If you look at it, adjust the colors and draw it out, it looks like possibly an image of Jesus. A combination of the ascension and communion. People on the right holding cups up to get the blood of Jesus. People on the left tearing the flesh off of Jesus. So this is like a, the literal interpretation of communion. I've seen the same imagery in Arizona. In this way it's pretty incredible. There's a whole bunch of really painted faces looking that direction. So this is more evidence to show what I've been saying in my videos, that ancient people turned the surface of our planet into art. From mosaics made out of little stones to huge geoglyphs. The whole planet is this way, you just have to look for it.